This is the story of you, where you came from, and how you got here. It is also the story of us, how despite all of our differences, we are more connected than we might think. Within each of us is a detailed account of our past, and as a result of a groundbreaking study, we are discovering things we once never thought possible. In April 2005, National Geographic and IBM launched the Genographic Project, a massive five-year effort to trace our DNA back tens of thousands of years to our earliest ancestors. By collaborating with indigenous tribes, as well as gathering and analyzing DNA from hundreds of thousands of people around the world, IBM and National Geographic are creating the world's largest database of genotypes. The goal? to map the history of the human species. I wanted to draw people together, to make people realize that we're all part of an extended family and that our DNA connects all of us into a very tight-knit group. Grand Central Station, a microcosm of human diversity and the ideal place to demonstrate the power of the Genographic Project. Four strangers picked at random are about to find out their own personal history and how they are connected. My name is Spencer Wells. Hello, Spencer. I work with National Geographic. Oh. I direct a project for them called the Genographic Project. Yeah. And we're using DNA as a tool to study how people all over the world are related to each other. Would you be interested in maybe giving us a sample and oh, becoming definitely. a part of it? Out? Absolutely. Maybe getting yourself tested? 100%. Sure, as long as it doesn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't hurt at all. Well, let's get you started swabbing. Don't look at any of my fillings. <laughs> yep, up and down. Perfect. Then you do a second one, just to make sure we have enough of your DNA. First thing that comes out of the research is how closely related right. we all are. So, yeah. you know, we only started to separate about 2,000 generations ago, which is like that in the geological oh, sure. sense. We could be related. How do you feel about that? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Can't wait for my Christmas present. <laughs> in just a few weeks, Dee Dee, Frank, Cecile, and JW will get the results of their DNA tests and discover the mysteries of their pasts. So far, the Genographic Project has collected over 200,000 samples, and IBM's Computational Biology Group has been helping analyze the results. IBM were the first people we approached, and it made complete sense because there was the synergy between, yes, of course, they can supply the hardware, the hard drives, and everything else that we used to actually store the database, but they could actually help us analyze it as well. Biology has become an information science. So the research problems that we focus on have to do with how you can analyze the data, what kind of new information you can extract, and relate it to a biological phenomenon. It gives us much more intrinsic capability to apply to a myriad of other problems and issues in the world, in other industries, not just life sciences. Dee Dee lives near Minneapolis, where she's been tending bar for 26 years. There you go, honey. Are you ready to order? Oh, hi, Spencer the scientist. <laughs> You start off in Africa all those years ago, just like everybody else all over the world. And around 45,000 years ago, after living in Africa for a very long time, a little group of your ancestors left Africa and moved up into the Middle East. 40,000 years ago, you have recently come out of Africa. Suddenly, you're living in this icy wasteland with things like that walking around. And you've got to figure out a way to kill them to make a living and survive. Mm. What would you have done? Go to the bar? No. <laughs> I was thinking about my not having a blow dryer. <laughs> In Southern California, Frank is retiring soon and looking forward to a life on the golf course. He discovers that his ancient relatives crossed the Bering Strait in the last ice age to become the first humans to settle the Americas. It's quite interesting. Up to the last 15 to 20,000 years, uh, our ancestors were extremely adaptable who survived by hunting large mammals using sophisticated weapons and uh, small stone blades. And it kind of makes me understand why I feel that I'm such a survivor. Cecile Nepal's results were extremely rare. What is most amazing is that I'm descended from the first to ever po to populate the Philippines. That's just, that's just mind-boggling. Now Cecile lives and works in New York City, but she still feels more connected than ever to her Philippine roots. 
we are an ancient 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 people that's that's that to me is fabulous new york city cop jw lives in brooklyn with his wife and son his DNA results confirm his Puerto Rican, Spanish, and ancient African heritage. But that's not all. What was surprising was that we were the actual first humans to ever plant seeds. And from that, we generated this huge cultivation of crops. And, and we pretty much changed the face of, I guess, mankind, if you would. Coming from grandparents who were farmers themselves, I kind of see the relation there. So pretty interesting. Everybody that we met at Grand Central that day ultimately traces back to an ancestor in, in Africa. I feel connected because we all have one common place of origin, East Africa. Regardless of what our exteriors look like, regardless of how our accents may differ, our customs, our holidays, whatever the case may be, it all started here and we all have that connection. The cool thing that, that comes out of this research is obviously that we're all connected to each other and that we scattered to the wind, if you will, to populate the world over the last 60,000 years.